Hare's tail cotton grass or bog cotton is one of the most eye-catching of all bog plants but only during this month of May when it is in fruit. The fluffy cotton tail heads are actually clusters of little nutlets each of which has a long plume that acts as a kite to carry the seeds to a long distance, sometimes even miles away. And the cotton grasses are really one of the few really conspicuous or eye-catching sedges. Even though there are something like five and a half thousand species worldwide, uh, including 70 here in Ireland and a couple of dozen in this part of the Midlands, um, none of them are particularly eye-catching apart from the cotton grasses. Sedges are, for the most part, plants of wet places. Uh, and the reason th that we don't notice them basically is because the flowers are wind pollinated so they don't need to go in for colour. And the other thing is that the leaves in nearly all the species are inconspicuously grass-like. So this is hare's tail cotton grass which is one of the two common species that we have and you can see the way it, it grows in these dense tufts uh, which are known in some cases to be as much as a hundred years old but only a small percentage of the uh, root mass is actually is actually living. Uh, the other common species, in fact even more common than hare's tail cotton grass and which prefers wetter places uh, is this the common cotton grass uh, where you can see uh, there are several heads to the inflorescence and they're not at all as fluffy uh, when the seeds are ripe as the hare's tail cotton grass is. And the other big difference uh, is that this species, this common species, uh, it doesn't form tufts, instead it spreads extensively by means of its underground rhizomes and can sometimes form really extensive patches. All the plants in the foreground here belong to a single clone of common cotton grass, extending ever further out onto the bare peat by means of these rhizomes and providing conditions better suited to the arrival of later colonising species of plants and of animals. Cotton grasses are among the most characteristic plants of the growing bog sometimes occurring in distinct layers in the peat, where, in the days when turf was cut by hand, these layers were the bane of the turf cutter's life, because the slain won't cut through them, they are so matted and dense, so you couldn't cut the sods cleanly. Hare's tail cotton grass flowered back in March and April. The inflorescence is a single dense spike of small hermaphrodite flowers separated from each other by a chaffy scale called a gloom. Although the flowers don't have sepals or petals in the familiar sense, each floret in the head is surrounded by a necklace of bristles, and it is these bristles that enlarge greatly in fruit to form the familiar cottontail head. Where it grows abundantly, a cotton grass meadow in May is like summer snow. In an earlier time, when communities very often had to be much more reliant on their local resources, bog cotton was sometimes mixed with cotton to form peat wool that was used as a cloth. It was also used to stuff pillows and to make surgical dressings, but the tensile strength of the fibres here is, is much inferior uh, to those of cotton itself. The leaves and stems are somewhat too coarse for most insects. But bog cotton is one of the food plants of the large heath butterfly, which is one of the loveliest and most uh, bog-specific of Irish insects. <laughs> 